Yeah, we're right, done. You ready? Yeah. All right, we'll call the meeting to order. Seven thirty. A short meeting tonight, which is good. And we have some documents for review, Don. Yes. So we just right. got order conditions for the uh, source of the treatment right away, the replacement. <laughs> Before we do the, um, the order of conditions for the uh, Reynolds, yeah, just wanted to uh, let the commission see the. Uh, they did provide calcs on the. We just got these plans uh, today, so Matt hasn't had a chance to look at them. But um, what they did was they um, they enlarged the size of the um, the drywall, so they're saying it will actually store the first inch of rain. I didn't know if that meant the difference between infiltrating it and storing it. And I know, I just didn't know if you guys had any concerns with the size. Because um, they originally were going with smaller ones because, you know, they were hoping not to get close to the root structures of the, of the trees. But I think they're taking these out anyways. That was the one we were hoping to save. Right, or prune, you know. Right, yeah. And then these are going to remain. So... It looked okay, um, but if you guys wanted to, if you thought it was a little too big and you wanted them to say, well, it does not be that big, I didn't know if you guys were okay with that. Why? Not, I mean, is there a reason it's here and not moved over this way a little bit? Closer to the house, I mean, Ed? Yeah, like well, away from the tree. Away from the tree. Right. And then you you're dealing with these too. Right. Yeah, there's a maple tree there. Could you do it just a special condition that says drywalls will be located to minimize impacts to root structures or something like that? Yeah, we can. I can yeah, add that, that language. A condition. Yeah. So I've got it going around now, but I can definitely add that based on on this information what they're providing. I thought those dry wells they were showing before were kind of small, tiny, and these are. And I was like, "Whoa, these are really big!" You know, they're saying, "All right, we're going to store, not just infiltrate. We're going to store the whole first inch." Here are the well, they have the, per the uh, um, perforations in the structure. Yeah, and then there's crushed stone. Right. right. So I guess. So the, so the dash line is the stone. Yeah, the dash line okay. should be that. Yeah. What do you think? Personally, I had no opinion either way because, quite honestly, if they fail, they just bubble up and then they go on the lawn. So right, right. Serves the same purpose. Right. Yeah, you know, it's just like. I mean, I'll defer to Melissa and Carrie on this. They're the experts. Storm water. So. Yeah, I don't think we have a particular. We don't. Regulation that's, you know, anything that says it has to be, it has to hold the, the in. So I think it's good to know what they, they put in, but yeah. Okay. So we'll just put that Thank special you. condition, Don. Yeah, we'll add it because I do have a drywall condition. I'll just add that extra language to minimize root damage. Great. I will say the tree that we had to take down to get the new septic system kept right. the old septic system working quite remarkably well. <laughs> And and we've got choice. the order of conditions for <laughs> mass DOT, the, um, the soil um, geotechnical borings. But there was never a problem in the summertime. We've got the order of conditions for the um, garage addition, hidden row. And we've got a signature page for a COC the commission already issued. It Sorry. Somehow it didn't quite make it to the red tree deeds. For Penny so, Meadow? Yep. Okay. When you get on a town board, you have to sign things. You should get a stamp. <laughs> you want to spring for your own stamp, Ed? <laughs> I don't think yours would fit. <laughs> yeah, I need three stamps. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Okay, a couple new applications filed within the past two weeks. Wall Street Development, Notice of Intent for Zero Leonard Street. This was for the removal of the drainage pipe. Don, as I understand it, right? Yeah, we haven't done the complete intake. They both came in today, so. Okay. We haven't even really looked at them. All right, and that one for Legacy Farms. All right. Okay, Sabastensky, 9 Linford Road, or Lyford Road. This is a, an exemption request. Yes. Um, so, here's the letter. And let me open up the uh, sketch. This is the one with the two dogs on the bottom of the letter. Exactly. So. Got some site photos. So basically, you got the existing house right here, um, septic system here, and the yard's pretty tight in the back. Yeah. So a lot of the fence would be going through. Let me show you some of the photos I was able to go out and get a. So basically, this would be the corner of the house. Turn on the. Uh, we got a little deck right here that they actually did as a as a, an exempt. Uh, activity a few years ago. So basically, get along here, and then the fence would still be going out into the uh, into the wooded area. Right. And, and they're proposing to keep it off the ground a few inches. Just yeah, for yeah, that, just for the small. Yeah, exactly. You okay. know, the that three to six inch range. Yeah. Um, and it would just basically go right around, and then the the old order. Um, there was supposed to be like a demarcation, like a PIB. Right. And so whatever was out there, if it was there, it's it's not there now. So I think in the request they were talking about they would um, put some down. Yeah, they would create a you know physical demarcation between the existing line behind us to what it's so. So basically, when the when the fence went in, you wouldn't think, all right, oh now I can clear up to the right. fence. It still want to show that demarcation of this is lawn and and the rest of the fence is in is in the woods. Yeah. So that is the exemption. Okay, I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, you know, with the caveat that they keep the fence off the ground as they're proposing, and then they put the PIBs in, and then just want to make sure that's okay with everyone else. How far into the buffer zone is the fence? Yeah, it's um, basically it would. The what, reason it's before you guys is because it goes into the 50. So if it was outside 50. Um, I could have just done it at a staff level. So the dogs will dig underneath it. They'll have a grand time. So you get basically the wetland in this area, and the fence would still be in the buffer zone. How old is that wetland boundary? How old is the what? The wetland boundary. Yeah, and that, that is old. You know, we didn't we didn't redelineate anything. So. Mm -hmm. that the, the lot seems to have a lot of frontage that they're not fencing, and if they fenced the fence the frontage instead they may get the same fenced in area without going into the buffer zone yeah they're probably just trying to avoid crossing the driveway though right and then they'd have to put like a gate and right um. yeah they get access through yeah <coughs> private access here they're just trying to keep it so I think you can let them out in the backyard and they would have they could contain them maybe we can ask them to pull it a little bit farther away from the actual resource area does that make sense don it took me a little bit to settle in where is the 50 line on that map there isn't a 50 line no, do you have a guess that. where it is um i did not i just want to have a sense how much it's right it looks like right. it's i'm looking place. at it on my computer right too here. i can't right here they're showing 69 yeah. from wetland to future expansion 69 so Call that, you know, I'd say it's probably about so 30. 50 would be right about 30. 30. 30 back here, around 30. Actually had the, um, you know, the full-size scalable plans back at the office. Yeah. Uh, we pulled them out of the archives to, to scan it, to, to send it to them. And the dotted line is the, the water border, the wetland. Yeah, this is the BVW at so the that's time. The this is an old, spot. this is an old filing. This is uh, file number seven sixty two it's probably just a an act only application back in the day hmm. 
How do, they, how do they put the posts in? They would, I think they talked about it in the post, post hole digger. Yeah, post hole digger and. I mean like by hand or by machine? And uh, they. They think. haven't spoken to any fence companies yet. They wanted to get the commissions okay first. Yeah, I think that would be a caveat that they do it by hand. <coughs> any soils removed as part of the fence installation process we probably dealt with to avoid any runoff run off into the wetlands. I think I'd rather see a little bit more of a plan than just a description. We want to put in a fence and we'll be good. <coughs> What more? That's my own what more would you want than the? Like I'd want to know what, what kind of fence it is. Like I, I don't know. I, I just feel like that map only tells me so much. I, I don't have a sense how much room that is for the dogs to run. Do they need that much room for the dogs to run? Um, I get that we can't expand. Well, can't that expanding to the front yard is is somewhat problematic with the driveway and everything. Um, I don't know. Yeah, the, same, the goal is to have something that blends in with the existing woods, with a small space under the fence to allow. But it also has to be a fence that can't allow a dog to run through it, right? Exactly. That's why they, they said um, instead of the six inches, you know, they would prefer to have it at the three. Like if it were chicken wire with stakes, it would probably shrug. It's fine. I, I, <laughs> but I doubt that that's what they're proposing as well. I want to say it was well, chain I, link. What did I read that? I mean, we can always say, like, it seems like we be amenable to it, but, like, go out to, yeah. We're open to a fence idea, come back with the thing before, yeah. you know. Okay. I think the letter says they haven't spoken to the fence company because they want to, right. I'm going to turn it into feedback. Not okay, but feedback for us. Yeah. So do you want to have can them come in and explain it? it to it, or...? Uh, I don't even know that they need to come in. If I had a better uh, a photo, just a little more detail. I, mean, I don't mean to make the decision for everyone. My own thought is, if I had a photo of what kind of fence they're talking about, if I had a better sense of where and how often we're inside the fifty, it, it just it's, it's a little too squishy for me to really know for sure what I'm approving. Right. Is my own take. Yeah. And then obviously, you know, the sketch they gave me wouldn't be to scale, so I'd be sort of I'd be trying to just pick up. You know, I'd be looking at the original and saying, okay, right about here at the 69 between here, and then I'd just be measuring off a little mock I'm making, you know, because what this meaning is to readable scale. I think the other thing to me is, you know, I don't know if the topo ends, if the topo ends here because that's just where they stop driving it on the plan right or if it truly gets flat here right and this is a slope down is if it gets flat here i you guess it'll be the wetland boundary may actually be at the toe of this slope mm. i mean obviously somebody flagged it here for a reason but if it was right that long ago you know that it's not out of the question that the wetland is actually right here right yeah so that's a good point i had, hadn't thought of that at all All right, so why don't we ask them for a little bit more detail, Don, um, on, you know, what type of fence they're going to install, who's going to do it, how it's going to be installed. They'd be amenable to pulling it back from the resource area a little bit from the, from the wetland. Right, because, you know, they can just run the electric fence from tree to tree. That would do the job. <laughs> we could have them just kind of stake it out in the, in the field and we can go out and take a look. You know what I mean? Yeah, that would be ideal, yeah. actually. I don't really have a big like, issue in it as long as we get some kind of confirmation they're not going to remove any trees and that they're going to put in a, didn't say something like, you know, delineation. Because based on these slopes and where it is, I, I don't, I'm not worried about yard creep or anything like that. Right, yeah. yeah. I mean, and, typically. But it would just be nice to have all that stuff for the record. Yeah, I don't know if they actually said that, but typically the commission would say, yeah, you know, you would. You would you would run the fence in such a way that you know you're not taking out trees you know bigger than four right. inches across you know. But you mentioned something like the permit, like the PIB was on the plan. Or no, something? it's not. Oh. But the but the the um, the order calls it out. Right. So, so, so something that they, like um, clarifies that if the the fence is not. I don't know. Right. So basically, they would need to.
install some sort of PID along the edge of the existing line. You know, so basically, you'd be looking to get something, you know, along. No, I'm kind of open like if they did like medallions on that tree line, so they don't. Yeah, theoretically, nobody takes down that tree line and then put up right. the fence behind and let the little dogs run around. Right. Is the is the fence line on the property line, or is that just an arbitrary? They just picked. The, they picked the place that was flat and gray. It looks flat. like a straight line on a grade. Yeah, they just. Oh, they, they could just probably move it back. You're right. They you know, it would, I mean, it doesn't even have to be a straight line. They could move it back where the if that wetland marking is accurate, where that is, you just kind of have it. Yeah, but if it's just a nondescript fence hidden behind trees. Okay. And I, I don't know. I just feel like there's not enough information for me to say this is a good idea. Yeah, so let's let them know down that we're amenable to it. We just need a little bit more detail. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, Mesut, this is a continuation of a notice of intent for the construction of a single family home at 10 Linden Street. Good evening. Good evening. Joe Marquardt, joined by uh, Peter Mezzet, homeowner of number 10, future, hopefully, owner of number 12. Uh, Linda Street may recall Peter Rohn's number 10. Thank you. Here at the end of the uh, existing gravel drive, what we're asking you to consider is this expansion of uh, the drive to service the uh, house location here. We will pave from the existing pavement here and um, take out the gravel surface and replace it with uh, bituminous. We're adding in a turnout to facilitate uh, the passing of vehicles here and this T to satisfy the uh, fire chief to get uh, his emergency vehicles in and out of the site should there ever be um, a need. Um, as a status update, we were with uh, the planning board last night to discuss this same proposal. We made some uh, changes at the request of the chief to widen this throat coming in through here to uh, um, ensure that uh, all the wheels of the vehicles will stay on the asphalt. And then we made a change back here outside the, the limits of the buffer zone to satisfy the chief as well. Um, based on uh, some of the information contained in uh, Matt's memo from uh, January. We also made it, uh, some additions to the plan and provided some additional info uh, to the Commission. Uh, the stream stat analysis, um, the 50 foot buffer to the uh, to this BBW associated with the intermittent stream out here and again uh, along this BBW associated with that intermittent stream. Um, in response to the concern about the flow of um, stormwater out the end mm -hmm. of uh, the T heading uh, mitigated to the intermittent stream and the BBW. Um, at Peter's request, we, we reviewed a few options and came up with uh, the idea for a rain garden. I've got a different scale there, and we'll make it a little bit easier to see. A rain garden out here at the end of the T. Same orientation, just blown up twice the size. So we're introducing a crushed stone filter here, uh, loom and seed area here to filter out sediment into this rain garden, 38 by eight, foot and a half deep. And we'll set the entire westerly edge at the same elevation. We don't have a single point discharge. It will flow, if this should fill, will flow out evenly and head down um, to the, uh, the resource area. We feel it, it'll offer uh, BMT that'll be a BMP that will be effective uh, for this site. Mm -hmm. uh, we've also added in uh, a dry well to uh, infiltrate the rooftop runoff at that location there, uh, outside the buffer zone, but up here on the, the west, the east, could be the uh, westerly side of uh, the home. And uh, the erosion control line has been connected 
throughout the buffer zone in this area outside the buffer zone and back to the original location. And then there was a quick summary at the bottom about those changes made at the request of the fire chief. Okay. All right. Thank you for those additions. Um, so based on the increase in the drive um, area there that the fire chief requested, how much additional buffer zone disturbance is there approximately? Uh, Couple of feet wide by 40 feet, so maybe 100 square feet. Okay. All right. Yeah, it was this location right in here? As he backs out, makes that turn, we added two feet. Yeah. And it. then we got wider here outside the buffer zone from 12 to 15, but we went from 18 to 20 right in here. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, uh, Matt. Did you have any? It looks like everything was addressed that you were concerned about. Yeah, can can you describe? I think you had shown some snow storage areas on there. Can oh yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was wondering. Yeah, uh, based on some discussions we had last time we were in, the uh, concern was about uh, the nature of the construction down here and. Uh, what could happen with regard to the construction and what should happen with uh, long term and highlighted a couple of areas these locations here that could function as uh, snow storage areas so down through here obviously these trees will disappear with the construction and as can be allowed Peter to push the snow into those couple of areas there and the town doesn't plow the site right uh, yeah how big is that area for snowstorm? Oh, uh, you scale, Joe? Yes, please. <laughs> well, but if it's twenty big, by it's big, twenty <laughs> and twenty by eight. Mm -hmm. How, how close is one of those was fairly close to the rain garden is that right yeah, yeah adjacent to it on the uh, downhill side of the crushed dome filter so theoretically we will flow away rather than towards the rain garden. okay questions or comments from the commission Procedural question. I don't have a problem with that. But, like, part of, like, part of the stuff you're proposing is on another private property, correct? Part of what? Part of, like, the work that you're proposing is on, like, it's, it's on another private property, right? Maybe it's on the abandoned rail, railroad? Yeah, in the private way. In the private way. So, it's, but it's not owned by the town. It's not owned by you. So, like, procedurally, like, how do we, how do we condition that? Can we? Because it doesn't, it wouldn't go on, you know, when it goes on the deed, it gets tied to that property. Or you, it would be tied to your property. I'm, you, I'm asking out of curiosity. Yeah, uh, uh, basically, any order of conditions that the commission issues has the language where it basically absolves the whole private property. Like some of the standard conditions that even are right on the DEP. Enforceable. Yeah, the so order does not grant any property rights or exclusive privileges, does not authorize any injury to private property or invasion of private rights. So the private way has been... And it does not does not relieve the permit, uh, the applicant, any or other person of necessity of complying with all other applicable federal, state, local statutes, ordinance, bylaws, or regulations. So basically, just because we say they can build there, it doesn't yeah. mean if someone, someone else can... That's right, know, somebody else... Yeah, Lays claim to that, then right? That's yeah, we went through this 2001. It was the old Hartford Worcester Railroad was abandoned, so we dealt with that in 2001. I remember we were allowed to do what we already did, which was the same thing. And you've tent. maintained it since and then. We've maintained it, right? Right. And you're the only one who uses it. Yeah. For access to your property. Right. What's that? It was just out of curiosity. Really, if you had to put it on both deeds or whatever. Like paper roads or something. Just more like your asking. 
so it's on the property. It'd be a, it'd be for the on the deed for the ten Linden Street property. Mr. Mezzet's property would be tied to that. I mean, yeah, I, th I thought he'd be, you'd still be applying to DPW for your driveway, driveway permit. permit. Yep. You know what I mean? So, right. DPW looks, I mean, basically, you know, yeah, I mean, the commission is looking at the, the jurisdictional area, but you're really not looking at the property, ownership. right? You're not looking at the ownership. You're just looking at, all right, is this, is this within our legal jurisdiction from a wetland standpoint? You're not putting on a lawyer's hat and saying, oh, you know, right. This is legally, you know, from a property ownership. You're just looking at it from the Well Protection Act, right? And the bylaw. And the yeah, bylaw. I think the, the only other side to that coin that I'll throw out there is, you know, when the application is signed, it's supposed to be signed by all owners of right. any land where work is proposed. So I don't know if that. But that was still undetermined, right? You. You're saying no for the planning board issue more or less, and they approved of it because it's an abandoned. And I don't even know if we're on that or if we're on our side of it anyway. I don't even know. A little bit of both. Yeah. Well, there's, yeah, there's a way. Because it doesn't in show up on the. Uh, it doesn't show up on the GI in, in the, like the, there's not like a map block and lot for it, right? And like who owns it, right? There's. Yeah, no one's it, paid taxes on it for. Correct. State. Yeah, it's it's the private way that came about when the railroad, went right. um, went, bankrupt, and then the owners it was discontinued. The owners have rights to some portion of it yeah so I imagine that as it went down each of the folks would have s the ability to lay claim to some of it could they mm -hmm. prove um, that they took the necessary steps back in the 40s and 50s mm -hmm. right yeah so when you go to click on it you, you don't have oh, I'm sorry yeah. portions of it of the old Railroad beds are specific lines, right? If you go, I mean, yeah. obviously, center trail is the base example of it. Oh, yeah, portions. Echo trail. Portions were bought up. Um, we're 66 foot wide, the full width of the railroad here, and then we dropped down to 33. The accommodations were made by these folks um, in the 40s to purchase 200 by 33. Own that. So that became the bounds of Linden Street, the old railroad minus what came out. So Same Linden sort of thing uh, happening way down on the, the Echo Trail, down the other Milford Town line, the sections that were but bought by the Wyckoffs. But other yeah. parts of it, between, is Marilyn your sister in law? No, aunt. Your aunt. Okay, yeah. so behind her, where the horses roam, next to. <laughs> Oh, where right. she used to live. Yeah, I know where you're talking okay. about. So behind, and behind the, the Methodist Church property we bought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's mm -hmm. sections it's of no. that easement that are just kind of in nobody's leg claim. Nobody's paid taxes on it. There are individual parcels. I've heard, we, we've looked at it for the Upper Charles Trail mm -hmm. and to go through there. But I've heard stories of, well, this is so and so, this is their property, this is their property, but there's no record of it ever actually. Right having been titled or deeded or yeah. anything else so yeah so when we did the NOI intake it's like okay that's the property owner there there is no property owner to get a signature for here there is no property owner to get a signature here that we can go find. west of the uh, so yeah. we I proceeded guess, and then cool you know I'm just thinking and we're asking my concern as we go along like you're obviously sure. investing in this property, you're going to put improvements, you're going to take care of it, but it's like long-term operations and maintenance, especially for these where it's kind of perce perceived as, you know, a road or a public, you know, if somebody went down there, the next property, I mean, I don't know. I just get, um, you know, how do we protect, the, make sure that long-term operations and maintenance gets done? And it's kind of hard on a place like this because technically that rain garden would be half in something else and it takes it from the road. You are here as an applicant saying, I'm taking responsibility for it, but legally, if you ever sell that property, the next person wouldn't have to? Well, they would. They would, but they of course, would. in fact, they need it to get to their house. The yeah. road, but like not the... It'd be tied as a condition to the order that it needs to be maintained that will carry with the property and would be incumbent on the property owner to do that. 
for the portion that falls on their property. <laughs> And this is going to be maintained by you, not the town. Correct? So I've always brought my trash and plowed. The town right. doesn't take care of this. I do. No, as I and said. And it's a road, but they let it be a little narrower than a 20-foot road. <coughs> right, right. So, yeah. And so your concern, I, th I think, because I think I share it, is if and when the house is sold, they maintain the official property that's part of the house, but the road is on this nebulous, legally speaking bit. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing that says they have to maintain that the way Mr. Mezza does. Right. And, right? This, and, and that's... In this particular case, obviously, it's of that person's best interest to maintain everything. So this is why I said it's more a procedural question, because it comes up in all these goofy kind of abandoned lots and, you know... We did, what was it, like on Woody Island, we're chasing down whoever owned it. So I'm just curious, because no, most of the time we, we don't see B&Ps being um, across property lines. So yeah, as we go through them, normally you have the ability, um, as, you, as you move through these, to have multiple owners, multiple lots, if you will, trying to upgrade right, yeah. uh, a, a footpath or an old cart path. And then the Homeowners Association is, it, is the catch-all, is the kitchen sink, the, the three or four new lots combine, get together, legal agreements right. come together. Right now, Peter is the only yeah. member using it. Uh, if and when the Reardons do something, which seems unlikely, Peter is the one, so a mechanism um, is, is difficult when yeah. Peter's maintaining it. So I guess we're, we fall in a funny category. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The, a little bit of a gray the area sorry, through the chin. Yep. So, I mean, obviously, like, yeah, the property line, half of it is here, but the order is going to recognize the plans right. and the entire thing. And, and, and the commission would say, yeah, you'd have to ongoing, you know, ongoing condition would be to maintain the B, you know, the BMP. Right. So, a portion of the rain garden is on the property. Don, is that with you? Is off like I think Carrie's saying. Yeah, this is on. A portion of it's on. This is in the right of way. Right, right. You know, so a portion so, of it is in the right of way. Right, mm -hmm. but then yeah. the order, and we always we always record the order, yeah. and then we take an eight map by eleven. We reduce the plan. We have it in there. So right. we're just pointing out the BMP in the commission's jurisdiction. You know, is going to be maintained as an right. ongoing basis. You know. Yep. Yeah. Okay. As far as people recognize what are conditions and certificate of appliances, you know, 20 years from the road. I, yeah, 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 I know. Yeah. Well, and that was part of my question, too, because no. you're going to plow the own right. Um and you know where the snow needs to go. I don't know that the future owner of that home does, and they might just shove it right off the left-hand side of the road because that's really easy. They might dump a ton of salt or road sand in there. Well, the plans will be recorded with the Red Street. With, with the order yeah. at the registry deed, so that goes with the property. Mm. It doesn't go with Mr. Mezzi. Yeah, so and who and enforces? How does that get enforced? We do. You, we do. We drive down there. Yeah, the, the, we just well, go yeah, 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 yeah. You know, that's yeah. always, <laughs> we deal with complaints. You know? Right. That's you know that's always the uh, this portion, you know the concern on any of these right. projects that we approve yeah. is that you know who's enforcing it. You know we don't have the resources to go out and monitor every one of these. Approvals that the commission issues, yeah, well, you know, it's incumbent uh, that the homeowner is going to do it, and that they're going to follow, you know, the recommendations of the commission and what's in the order conditions. And unless there's a complaint by someone, right? And and I guess that's. I don't know. And then you get, you know, the the, the roadway and the BMPs that the town takes over as the town managing it. And then you get the ones that are homeowners association right. or the homeowners association managing it. Yeah. I mean, that's really my biggest worry. Is there's so much within the buffer that we're trusting people will, and not just you, Mister. I have complete trust in you, Mister. Frankly, but I don't know what the future holds, and I don't know where the snow is going to go, and I don't know where the salt's going to go. And we're right there next to a water source, and frankly, that frightens me for the future. Uh, down this little tiny road that nobody sees at the end of a dead end. Um, if I knew, Peter, that you were living there for the next 200 years, I'd be like, great. <laughs> Here's a guy that knows plants, knows nature, knows how it all works. 
Well, I'm excited about the rain garden because that's a. I think it's really cool. Thing. I, I'm going to want to maintain that. Okay, well, no, no. Sure. I, my worry is beyond you. Um, right. right. And, and that's a concern on every one of these. I mean, it's not just this yeah. particular application. It's a concern. No, I get that. Yeah. In my, it's just because, yeah, they are. Like, I guess in an ideal world, we'd have a private easement on the other property, but you don't have somebody to go to sign it. That's all. But I, I think, you know, procedurally, like we talk about, it goes in the work conditions, it gets signed, you know, and then it's up to, it's in the work condition, you have to maintain it even on the other property. That should be good enough. That's as close as we can get to legally by. Yeah. Okay, questions or comments from the audience? Actually, yeah. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, can you just uh, get your name and address yeah, for the record, please? Um, I'm the neighbor. I think you guys uh, read my letter at the previous meeting, so I won't rehash that. But um, I just had one question. Uh, when we applied to replace the septic system, it was in an existing yard. It, it grazed the 100 foot buffer in the leach field, and it was to like save the house from being condemned, probably foreclosed for the prior owner. We came in and fixed it. And uh, one of the questions that was asked was, can we do the leach field, but keep it further away from the wetlands? And we couldn't in that case, but the question was asked, and I was wondering if the question was asked, uh, if the driveway could be put in another location, like through the existing front yard. And uh, if that's the type of question you guys would typically ask. So to answer your question, yes, we did look at that um, as a, uh, we did look at different options as part of the review process. Um, so the commission did ask that, and this is the plan that um, the applicant has, uh, the final plan that the applicant decided on. Okay. So it's, was there like a reason the driveway couldn't go in a different location? It's a road. And you need the road frontage. The planning board wants to see the road frontage. Right, but there's other houses in the area that don't have any road frontage at all. They have rights away through other properties. So, that's your answer. We chose this because this is the traditional method. We have the private way. We need to establish frontage on that private way. Um, the um, locations that we chose with um, in relation to the actual driveway layout to facilitate the passage of the emergency vehicles made more sense, we thought, in the right-of-way of Linden Street. So we are following the traditional method, which we think is most appropriate for this situation. I appreciate your concerns, and we have uh, incorporated a lot of those in some of the other choices that we made with regard to septic system, house location, uh, dry wells, those sorts of things. We just felt that uh, the access road, um, which we have taken the right of way and we've altered the construction standards, quite frankly, is what we've done. Given the nature of the fact that we've got one home, we feel that's more appropriate in the location shown. Okay. You said you changed the location of the house, of the proposed house? The location we've chosen, yeah. Since the original proposal? No, the location of the of the home in septic and dry well is part of planning that Peter and I undertook in the very beginning mm -hmm. of this process to minimize our buffer zone impacts. Sure. Choices, should be, choices Peter made before we even came to see this group, before we even entered into the idea of developing the parcel. Okay. Um, so you mentioned emergency uh, vehicle access and that's part of the reason why you designed it this way. Um, and w with the picture that's up there, I, I drew like some alternate theoretical driveways. And um, could one T serve two houses? I mean, does the fire is the fire department um, concerned about? Um, I mean, having both houses on fire at the same time, and they need to go down different driveways to to get to them you lost me well with say for example that that alternate driveway at the top you still have a T there so the emergency vehicle could turn around um, you can obviously like alter the shape of the driveway so maybe it goes north south at first and then east west so 
you know the vehicle can turn how it needs to turn and then the driveway doesn't go through the wetland buffer but you still have a driveway that goes to the house yeah i think part of the issue is your sketch you minimize what you need to move that uh, ladder truck around it's actually the length of a semi right so it i think that i appreciate what you, you're you're tossing on ideas here but i think uh, maybe some of the the actual details would make some of those problematic and as we went through it we felt again that this was the way to head okay appreciate and peter was cognizant we we discussed your letters we received them as well mm -hmm. don shared them i think you sent some directly to peter uh, we discussed all that. Um, it wasn't as if we simply ignored some of your concerns. We just felt this was the best course of action. Okay. Okay. Um, so, was your question answered? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, to be honest, it's, I mean, without seeing the actual math of why a driveway couldn't be built through that way. It seems like a large area where you could make happen what you need to ha make happen. I'm not an engineer, but um, I guess I could have one look into it if I need to. Okay. Um, all right. Any other questions, comments from the audience? Okay, if I can get a motion to close and approve the notice of intent um, as discussed with the special conditions uh, being the rain garden, the snow storage, um, there were, um, there's a rain garden, the, st the storm, snow storage, the and the uh, erosion control, erosion control and the infiltration basin uh, for the roof runoff. Jeff, can I add? Yeah. No use of salt. All right. We can use environmentally friendly. We have a standard condition, which okay. is yeah, for, for um, buffers only. I don't like to use salt anyway, but again, after I'm not there, <laughs> I get it. Yeah. Is there a PIB on the plan? Yeah. There's a. Uh, I know you got a few sets. No, I do not believe there is. Okay. That's the signage of the it's standard limit of the work. Yeah. So you'll see that in the sure. standard condition. We should probably just note that on the plan, Don, the locations of those. Yeah, typically the, the order would read, you know, because right. um, he's got his erosion control here. Yeah. So the yeah. PIB would be installed right, so. in the location of the erosion control. Yeah. And then it would be reflected on the ASBO plan. Okay. All right, so is there a motion? Well, Mr. Chairman, one, one moment. Yep. I just discovered something. So if you look at the tax assessor's map, which I understand is not 100% accurate. Mr. I forget your last name, but I know your Reardon. first name is Matt. Mr. Reardon's property appears to go extend into this abandoned railroad bed, mm -hmm. right? Yes. As opposed to the subject property, which ends on the tax parcel at the edge of the railroad bed. If you pull the GIS up, Don, can you do that? Yep. And can you look at <coughs> U1390, which is Mr. Reardon's? Yeah. There it is. I got it right here. Mm -hmm. So just highlight U1390. You know, like click on it as if you were sure. looking for the property information. Yeah. So see how that goes across? The, uh, the old right away or part of Linden Street, mm -hmm. right? Is that how you know your property? Yeah. That's this does not encumber any of that, correct? Correct. This correct. stays to the yeah. Correct. Joe, you've got all the that. work in this white area, non highlight. Correct. Right. Yeah, we pushed ourselves to the southerly boundary line to avoid any conflicts with. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. In that case, Mr. Chairman, back to you. <laughs> All right, so there's a request for, uh, there's a motion uh, with the special conditions. I'll make the motion. And is there a second, please? 
And all in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed? So it's unanimous. Okay. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for your time. I'm not going to meet for, um, I like the uh, pottery bar that you put in at the greenhouse. Yeah, you like that? It's pretty cool. Yeah. 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 Thank you. I'm not going to meet for uh, three weeks, so I've got a signature page. Come on. Great. Good luck. Thank, Thank you, Jeff. You're welcome. Right in here when it goes around. So, uh, so Wall Street Development Lab is from an attorney. Yes. Yeah. What's this for? We're not, you, you, uh, we have to issue within 21 days. You guys are going to meet in 21 days, so we wouldn't make the post office when you guys came to sign it. We're not so we need you to sign it now so we can issue it within the 21 day time frame. So, this is what we just did. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, you just yes. closed the hearing. Okay. Now, well, legally, you have to issue the order. It doesn't say that on here anywhere, so I just wanted to know <laughs> right. what this was. That's all. Mm -hmm. Well, I get, I get orders here if you want to read the whole thing. You just signed a bunch of them. I'm going to throw one at you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it doesn't tell me anything. I got the phone. It's not like it's a blank check. It's a bunch of numbers. It's a phone number. Verify. Okay, Milford Water Company, Zero Echo Lake. This is an exemption yeah, okay. request. I want some. This is for repairs to the dam. Uh, yeah, yeah. I emailed those out to you. Yeah. Let me just get this off. Good evening. How are you all today? Good, thank you. Hi, um, I'm Lauren Gluck, Senior Environmental Scientist with Park Corporation, and I'm here with Barbara Hutto, Senior Project Engineer with Park Corporation, um, to discuss the shutter wall repairs at Echo Lake Dam. For those unfamiliar with the location, it's um, at the south end of Echo Lake. There is a stone arch dam. It's owned by the Milford Water Company, and um, it's accessible via Jacobs Lane, which is a gravel road. Um, and a little background. Um, in 1987, the masonry crest of the dam, the dam height was raised by installing these metal supports called stanchions along the crest of the dam. Um, we've enclosed some photos that show what those look like, um, along with a 30 inch timber stop, is it like a stop plank that you would call it, brother? Yep. A stop plank um, called a shutter wall along the upstream base. Um, recently, in February of 2019, several of the stanchions became kind of dis disjoint or dis what Bant. Dis <laughs> 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 like, what's the technical term <laughs> yeah so they became slightly displaced um which allowed water to get under the shutter wall um and essentially that was due to ice um, forces up against the wall from the heavy rains in the fall of 2018 um, and currently Milford Water Company is looking to replace the bent stanchions in their locations that they are now, which is along the top of the dam, outside of the water, um, to allow that shutter wall to be placed back into place and restore functionality. Um, there would not be any alterations to resource areas. Um, all the work would be confined to the top of that masonry dam and any access um, besides access along the crest would be confined to that downstream area which you can see pretty well in that photo. Um, it's an upland area that um, contains very little vegetation so there wouldn't mm -hmm. be any tree removal involved and all access would be via Jacobs Lane which is an existing gravel road. Um, so due to the very, you know, minimal implications to resource areas, we were requesting an exemption. Um, what kind of equipment do you need to bring down into there? I mean, is it just... Um, I, it, the contractor probably will only need to bring a boom truck because um, they have lowered the water level. These, these are pictures that I took yesterday so that you can see what it looks like without snow. Yep. They've lowered the water level behind the dam so that um, they can do this work. Initially, we um, were going to have them brace off the top of this thing, and what they're going to do is saw cut these bolts off of here. They're going to put a new, this is what the original design looked like off of these drawings. They're going to put a new stanchion in front of where that pipe goes now, mm -hmm. um, and lag bolt it back into the four by sixes that 
transfer at one time right there that are behind here. The four by sixes that are rotten like this one we're going to replace. There's about six of those or five of those. One of them that is missing. Um, this pipe stanchion would be replaced by basically a wide flange that will put chemical anchors in the top of the dam. They've lowered the water back here so they will take pipe stanchion off, cut it off at the base, um, replumb the wall, um, set this about an inch above there, put some epoxy grout here and the um, curve that's there now that actually lifted up when this thing came up. It lifted up and this epoxy sealant in the back opened up and water started to come mm -hmm. underneath the wall. We're going to pull all that back down and replace all of that. And they will probably be able to do that with a boom truck from uh, the base of the dam. Okay. And Jacob Lane is wide enough to get the boom truck down into yes. there? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. I don't think I have any comments. It seems pretty straightforward. All the work is done at the top of the dam. Mm -hmm. Okay. All of the debris and excess material will be taken off site. Yes, sir. Okay. Matt, did you have any comments, questions? Mm -hmm. I think it's pretty straightforward. Questions or comments from the commission? Yeah. Okay. I think we're good. We don't need to vote on it. I never knew that was called Jacob Lane. Interesting. <laughs> okay. Is that where the kids walk down in the summertime? Yes. Is that, how, like is that how they access yes, it? Like it be, yeah. It's one of the ways they access it. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Very good. Thank you very much for Thank coming out. We much. appreciate it. Okay. When are you guys doing the work? Uh, they are it's out the bids right now. Probably, my guess is mm, a month, a little bit less. Okay. It probably won't take them. I don't know if it'll even take them a month to do all that. Mm. Good. All right. Well, good luck with it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. Heritage Properties. This is a portion of Zero Wilson Street. Site status review. Good evening. Good evening. Peter Venus, Engineer. Yep. How are you doing, Mr. Venus? Good. 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 Um, so I'm giving you an update this evening. Um, I appeared before you back in November. Um, this is when we were trying to get our arms around uh, a lot of uh, erosion problems at the site. We instituted a number of mitigation measures, and RED was basically all of those measures that had to be taken mm -hmm. uh, forward in, in some manner. Some had to be modified along the way as well. So this is kind of where we started uh, with this back then. And then uh, we had a second secondary plan. Uh, where we had taken our initial action, which you can see the green, that's where we went and stabilized all of those areas. And then we started identifying you know, what we had in place and where we had uh, primary cells, secondary cells, tertiary cells, and in some instances we had other uh, basins that were upgrading uh, from those. Um, so this is a December, um, a November iteration, and a bit of December iteration, where we had implemented everything prior to snowfall. So this is basically what, what was in place uh, with everything. And we've actually created some new basins up, up in this area and then a holding cell where we were taking water and actually pumping it from our lower basin uh, because we still just didn't have good treatment in that, that cell area. So we we're actually bringing the water back up so we can treat it again there and yep. then discharge it. So that's how we got through the winter mm -hmm. was basically with this whole program. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I lay this down so kind of flipping ahead to some of the you know the docks along the way that we created we had response letters uh, I had gotten a request this was uh, ransom was a company that uh, mr. McDowell um, was involved with that evaluated uh, pesticides at the site so there was a request through the Board of Health that we test for that uh, I did get that testing done before the winter season uh, kicked in uh, however the request was being done by a third uh, independent oh. third party so we are going to retain a third party. We will run that analysis again, but everything came back okay. Okay. So when will so the I'll spring? I'll do that right the, now. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's going to happen the next. Now. Okay. Yeah. So great. I'll, I'll try great. to assure you, and I'll go through Dawn yep. to get that done. I would hope to have this for you either before your next meeting or definitely by the meeting after that. I'm not Perfect. sure what your schedule. Is. Thank you. But it will go forward. Okay. These were the pictures that we had given you once before, documenting that initial uh, 
response. Then again, through the winter period, you know, we were out there. We had clean water through yep. the winter yep. period. Um, March 21, um, Chris uh, Lupino from Beta and uh, Phil Paradis um, had we got, had some exchanges of emails, correspondence, and then there was a site meeting. I could not attend the date that they selected. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought Mr. Gately would make it. He actually had a conflict as well, so one of the contractors was there. I apologize for that. I tried to reschedule. Uh, Phil had said that there was a, uh, a, a commitment from town officials to be there that date, so he was going to go forward with it, and I said, okay, fine. Um, I know that um, that um, the contractor WW, you know, had some discussions with them. Um, there were some things that apparently didn't get done that they had asked for, uh, which disappointed me because obviously, if something's being requested, we should just implement it. I mean, right. the yeah. site, it, 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 we did a lot, but that's still no excuse. You shouldn't. We shouldn't even be in the position we were in. Um, so, uh, we've got everything there now. Uh, this is where we're going forward with our next um, uh, segment of work. Will be that we're going to get loam and seed over areas that we just won't be getting to for construction. Okay. Uh, and that's what will basically get the site stabilized, and then we can have the site basically using the systems that were supposed to be there. All right. um, so that's where we're at. I would expect to be able to do that um, in later April and be ready for May. We really need 60 degree days every day to grow grass. Mm -hmm. It's not going to grow. If I put it down now, it's just going to wash away. <laughs> So um, those of you that know how to grow grass, then you know the dilemma that you know we all face at this time of year. Uh, so as soon as we get stable temperatures, we'll get the work um, in there and, uh, and together. So you know, again, recapping, I'll, I'll get the pesticide analysis done. And I know Don had sought some reports. Uh, I was doing these active overall global spec um, swept um, analysis and, and distributing information. Uh, there's a two-page. Uh, SWEP report that the contractor had been giving you on a weekly basis. Um, he thought that I was doing that. I thought he was doing that. I apologize for the disconnect. We think we can put that together through the daily reports that we have um, and we can back into it, Don. So I know you would ask them about it. I've talked to them about it. I said, look, I know the dates that I was there through my calendar. They're there on you know Monday through Friday. So we think that we can get there and we'll try to generate those for you after the fact. I'm sorry that we didn't do them on the weekly we don't, basis. We don't need the daily reports. We just want you know the SWIP reports. Right. right. But, but I think we can fill in that blank for you. So we've, we've talked it through and retroactively, it's retroactively okay. get them. And we'll, we'll be doing it now. Obviously, every Friday you're going to get the report again. And then on storm events. Uh, but I can assure you that we were there, we were responding because we didn't have any more events. Right. Um, right. And yep. that's that's really the charge you gave me back in November was yep. don't let it happen again, and we didn't. Yep. So um, we appreciate, again, all the efforts yep. that were put into this in the fall. Um, I think, you know, the um, different measures that were implemented were effective. Um, I was out at the site a couple days ago in the morning when we had the rain event. Uh, actually, it was yesterday morning, hmm. and um, everything looked good. You know, there was nothing coming off site. Right. You know, it was a relatively um, low precipitation event, but, you know, this is more of we just wanted to get everyone on the same page because it's springtime now. Yes. So we're going to be getting heavy rainfall events, and right. we just want to make sure that everything is in order before we have any problems. Yeah, um, we, so we, we would rather be a model site than a site you reference as the site not to be like. Yep, so we appreciate that. So um, the contract is that turnoff area um, on Wilson Street. So they put stone in around that, Don. I don't know if you saw that. Yep. You know, yep. that was taken care of. So that's good. Okay. Um, there are a couple, you know, one of the points that we made at the meeting to WW, because they're obviously out there every day, is you know, what I heard from them was, well, Peter's not here. You know, he didn't ask us to do this. You know, they said that a couple times. And I would just ask you to tell them, and we already messaged this to them at the meeting, don't wait for Peter to tell you to do something. I said the same thing to you. Him. Know, if it I needs mean, to be done, do it. And, and actually, I've gone there when, when I've told them to do things and didn't see it done, and yeah, I get upset. So I can understand your reflection on being upset because I know I get upset. Right. So there's common, there's there's common sense it. things. Exactly. You know, like repairing the sill fence if it's damaged. Yep. There were two temporary basins. Don, if you can bring those pictures up. Yeah, you know, that they were uh, pumping uh, water. So this is what you were telling me, Don, about the washout, because it came yeah, through the yeah. ice, and the I'm guy sorry. From Ashley was, was, was saying it was coming down here on ice, right. but then when you look at um, 
So you know your basins are probably up in this area. They they are. This back, is back this is the path more, that yes. comes down. Yes. You know, and then it came right out into that area, and out here. But there was an, there was another one that was either this one or this one where it came down, and instead of going you know out this way, it it busted through a stone wall here, where you can tell where um, Western Nurseries at one point putting crushed stone because they were having wash out there. So then it just ran overland and popped out here. So when Ashland said he was taking those pictures, it was running dirty at the at the turnaround here, but when it was busting through here, it was running clean. Mm -hmm. So basically, you're saying when it came down here, it was it was coming out of the you know those those you know the uh, the discharge point, and um, so it was just running carrying the sediment over the ice right down to the yeah. road. So and then when it hit the plant down here. It didn't go into the into the from what they described. It <coughs> crossed the road and went. Oh, instead of it going didn't, down yeah, to it the didn't ditch go into like the parking side. lot. It went on this side and just you know. So when it hit Ashland, it just that's when it crossed over the road and, and into the into their backyard. Okay. You know. So. so Don, can you bring up that photo of the you know the two detention basins, temporary ones they had? Where it was just silt fence. Yeah, I'm wondering if um, yeah, we've I can I probably have one if you don't. So I mean that was just another example of yeah. you know they set up the silt fences uh, temporarily. They were to maintain them and, and replace well, them. Well, right. well, ma maintain them, but common sense would say you know put something around the outside of the silt fence like hay bales or some type of berm so that when you're right. pumping the water into the this uh, is this right is here. the outfall before. So they oh yeah they, that's oh they, they did stabilize yeah, so okay. they, they did stabilize it. So basically, you had the two yeah. pens, and right. then the, you had you had breakout here, and then you had breakout here. So when it went down this way, that's where it hit the ice and went right out to Wilson Street. This way, it just went overland through the vegetation, and obviously a lot of the fines got filtered out by running right. through. Yeah. So, so that, they, they didn't have the hay bales. Yeah, yeah. They just right. had the silt fence, and they were pumping water, right? So I mean, you know, it's like a little swimming pool in your backyard yep. that the kids are in. You just step on the side, and uh, yep. you know, the whole thing empties out. Yeah. So basically, yeah. Those are supposed to be cleaned in each cycle. What we were trying to have was go from one go to the other. That way, you could take one down, always have one in operation. Ah, okay. That was the idea, and they were supposed yeah, to maintain it looked like them. It, yeah, it looked like they had the flock log set up in one of them, and right. I was like. I didn't understand the second one because they would they were disconnected. So that makes that's why sense. they did them yeah, was right. to, to take one offline so you would yeah. always have one available. Because you yeah. did, didn't they have some other device that was like right near those? It was like a something we had a pump. I have a picture of that too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Wasn't we that supposed to be? It, it had flock logs yeah. inside it. Yeah, and we pressurized the water. Yeah, so that, we, it, did that not work? It or? did work it extremely did. well. And yeah. some of it, um, and some of the flock logs, you could tell, like the, the the pumping push out some of them, but you could tell that white that white pipe hat was full of flock logs. Right. right. So yeah. we we did it. So we had this device that all the water had to pass through. So it was basically you're trying to uh, get higher concentrations of the flocculant into the water, and then the water would get discharged into that pit. Then the pit was also supposed to have contact areas on it. So we put we tried different things because basically you want surface area. That's what you're going to get the sediment to, to precipitate out on. Right. Then you take all of those things out. Um, so again, it, we, it was a little bit of a learning curve, and then it just takes um, commitment. Yeah, and and it's it's hard work. <laughs> no, we know it's a challenging so, site, but that's the site but that you inherited. Unfortunately, I, I did. <laughs> um, and we we so tried to hit it as hard as we could, and, and, yeah. and again, it's not an excuse. It's just a reason for where we're yeah, at, and we're going to continue to go forward and get things. Yeah, done. And just impress upon the contractors, you know, use common sense when they're out at the site. If they see something, you know, just take care of it, right? Correct. So that's the most important thing, and then right. hopefully we won't have any problems this spring. Because you're yes. going to be coming up into this area. You know, yeah. This is where you're pumping now, right. somewhere in this area. Right. So hopefully, I before think, we get I think there, Ashen's Don, concerned. We're... Now you're getting this close. Is it going to pop out right. into the? You know what I mean? Once you we open have that up, other systems in yeah, place. I've explained that Street to Mr. Street again, Gately, keep running down. You're not going to get another area opened up until we actually have all of the infrastructure in place to support it. Right. Yes. It just so, isn't going to work. Yeah. They, they just yeah. Ashen was very. It's a good recommendation. They've got their wells down there, and they don't want. Right. Any sediment going into this site. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time this evening. You're welcome. Okay. 
the uh, municipal preparedness program. Um, yes. Um, so I took a look at that application. That looked great. Thank yeah. you, Kerry, for taking the lead on that. Exactly. And um, DPW is working with um, Weston and Sampson, who's also actually doing our um, our uh, fed the uh, the what's the acronym I'm looking for? The stormwater. Please. Yep. Thank you. So. Uh, they're working on that, so, and was a letter, what I wanted to run by you guys was, make sure I got the right one, from Wesley and Sampson, their support letters, they were looking for... So Norman submitted a... Yeah, Norman will do one, they were um, doing, um, the grants manager is doing one. Um, John Wesley yeah. did one. Fire chief. Fire yeah. chief. Okay. And they were looking for the CONCOM, and I didn't think you guys would want to, wouldn't want to take another person to be the lead on on this because you guys are always on two or three other stuff. So I said they would probably make me the point person <coughs> to keep you guys right. in the loop, unless one of you guys wants to be. <laughs> so I know one of them. I know one of them doesn't want to, and I, and I, I think I shielded you pretty good, didn't you I? Did. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Excellent. So, so and I didn't think anyone else would want to jump in unless you guys want to. I figured. Any you volunteers? Wait. What, so are you talking about just you're just signing the letter now, or are you talking about no? But then yeah, but the then the workshop. grant thing. She she can tell you. Well, he, I know that. I know he, the. He, it's like then you got to put in the volunteer time, right? You know, so go to those meetings and yada yada. I don't think we're going to get any of you guys to. I, to do I actually that. don't mind helping out with this one, Don. It's kind of something that's near and dear to my heart. Do you want to you know on the climate change? You want me to change this stuff. letter to to the chair? Uh, you can co-sign it. Well, yeah, or, or, or I'll put yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll put, put you first, first, then I'll go on, then yeah. I'll go underneath. Yeah, yeah beautiful. All right, and then, I'll um, do that. Because just because you're signing the letter doesn't mean you're committing to be the one at the a point at person. the True. no 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 the point person. Well, it says I it I, I, this is what they put together. I am pleased to commit my time to participate in Hobnit. So to me, it seems like yeah. Oh, I'm, they say that. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was so. The that's why the board is in support <laughs> of. So right. Exactly. Point. Yeah. You know. So they they wanted the support, so but uh, they wanted a point person because. The grant okay. says, "All right, if you're going to pony up, you got to you got to put in the yeah, you hours. You got to put in the time. You know, you can't just say, oh, 'I'll do it' and then blow it off." So they wanted a face or a name, and I go, gotcha. "I'm not, I'm not putting any of my gotcha. members up at these pre meetings we had." You know, so I said, "Put my name in," and then I knew you guys would have a meeting tonight, and if you someone wanted to step yeah. forward, okay. I just, I've seen them written more generally too, where you're just generally the conservationist supporting, and, supporting and, and, the yeah. And, and, and process. do you guys want that? Because you could do that. Do you want me to change this language? I mean, this is what they put together as a draft, and if you don't like it, I mean, I would yeah. definitely say as a commission, I would support the process. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Or you can leave it how it is if you want to commit your time. I think it's cool. Gonna, I don't think they're going to look at it that closely. No, right. I don't yeah. think so either. I think she's just trying because it's that first wave of the the planning process, right? And we got to we got to have like an eight hour meeting, and then we've got to have an hour open to the public kind of thing. So there's yeah. like well, this is the application to get the funding to hire to get a consultant. The, yeah, there's two that mm -hmm. comes there's in two phases on the, the grant. Right. Right. You already you passed the first phase, the, and the yeah. framing of going to the second. So you have like a small group that identifies everybody, which Don will probably be a part of, which is most of the municipal staff that says, we think these are the stakeholders, and it's like a whatever small meeting, and then the stakeholders, which might be you, probably, if you want to participate, they do a full day workshop, and then right. there's an open to the public workshop. Yeah. yeah, so the workshop, though, is run by the consultant right. hire, and then, yep. I just said, it's not like I would have to coordinate nope. it. Or no, the you'd have, to, you'd have to, to show up and participate. Yeah, so. you're going to commit your time to participate. Yeah, yeah. so I don't, I don't mind doing that, Don. All right, you know. All right, I'll sign you up. Okay, beautiful. I'm a certified provider. If you need an extra body, but I'm sure Weston and Samson will do it. So, oh, you mean we need like like a chaperone? Is that what you're saying? Like no, a, no, they, like they, they a require list. a certified. Yeah, you can right. hire the training. And, and I and the group was talking because. Um, John had already retained Weston and Sampson to start working on, on this, and uh, we thought it was smart because 
they've been all over town mapping all right. the all the stuff so they just thought and the group that came together said they did the hazard right. mitigation plan right? yeah you know so it kind of made sense but like you know to stick with them just because we thought they, they had a really good understanding of, of, of the layout of the town mm -hmm. you know so I think that's I think why that I, makes sense right so you know the learning curve would be shorter for them I guess was, was the, the group's thinking makes sense okay I'll get that letter drafted and out to them tomorrow. So. All right, and then the Legacy Farms Landowners Association, 20 yeah. Ryegrass rye Circle. Yeah. How is that tree? Find it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With the uh, infestation. Yes. Yep. So. Is this a real thing? I, I, didn't see, I didn't see the bugs, so, you know, I, I, but everything I've read, you know, that would be a. Um, so he's nice proposing thing. to plant new. Uh, the homeowner. Right. Well, through the landowners. The so homeowners association. Right. Yeah. yeah. So Don, what's this bug? Um, the box elder. I emailed it out to everybody. Did yeah, I read it, it, but it doesn't. I mean, what's the bug? It's got some kind of a bug in it? No, what they do is, uh, when, when this thing leaves out, um, the box elder likes to go after female trees that are seed bearing and, and eat the leaves. And and then... What? Um, the tree? So... No, I'm the missing bugs. the leaves. The, the bug. bugs. The bug. That's what I'm saying. What's the, I'm trying to find out about so, the bug. Right. So the, so the bugs are attracted to this tree, which is right behind this guy's house. Yeah. And then... Uh, and then when when the leaves are going to fall off and these these bugs want to overwinter or they're even they, they just if you read it it talks about how they like to um hang out on on the house you know and then overwinter they want to get inside the house they're not going to breed and and reproduce in the house they're doing all that here they could they're gonna they're gonna eat they're gonna lay eggs the young are gonna hatch a couple of times over the season so the numbers go up and then this guy says, "I get so many bugs that I can't even go out in my yard. I can't go in my house. I can't go. I can't go out on my deck, and they're getting in the house over the winter. So he's hoping to remove this. And it's obviously you can see it's like a um, it's an ash that is fa fairly short. It's multi. It's uh, multi trunked. Uh, it's fairly young. It's just probably you know been you know bearing um, uh, seeds in the." past couple of years so yeah the box held the bugs that's 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 a buffet to, I know I got a lot of know. bugs flying through the windows yeah, in my know. house what can I do about them <laughs> stink bugs beetles right and, uh, mosquitoes pits. there was one of these last year right this is a different house bugs. this was the same one or it's the same, same guy but oh. uh, he he was putting forward and I'm like you can't put it forward you you're not oh, the okay. landowner it's a landowners association. I go. The request has to come from the association, so that took him a while to um, get that through. So basically, the the um, request came from the manager of the landowners association. Would you like to hear what Google says about are box elder bugs harmful? Yes, I would. Box, box elder bugs are nuisance pests. <laughs> <laughs> they do not sting or transmit disease and are generally not known to bite, although there are rare reports of defensive biting. Box elder bugs are not known to cause damage to homes or significant damage to plants. However, their feces can stain light-colored surfaces. <laughs> is that, a, is that some credible source, or is yeah, it just uh, Google? Uh, that's uh, just Google. And it's not from some Yeah, I emailed you out the same language. Uh, I, I huh. sent you out the, the, the pesticide write-up and the... Um, uh, and that's I actually, think it was you, Penn? Yeah, this is, that actually was taken from... Those seems are like that. The National Pesticide Information Center. Hmm. Okay, and I can, get, I can get into it from here. Okay. Well, Smashing them can release an unpleasant odor. Yeah. I'd like to brush out the entire resource area of the mass and get rid of the ticks. Can I do that? I mean, if he's going to plant additional, you know, shrubs, to replace the, tr the, you know, what he's taking down there, which is a small no. shrub or tree. I mean, I'm fine with that. Everything that's, that's my take on it, but I'll open it up to the other members. 
it's not much of a problem that he's gone through all this effort. <laughs> I, I, I see no reason to allow him to take the tree down. I'm, so sorry. I'm sorry, we all have bugs. 12 months of the year. Okay. You can't get rid of them, short of cutting all the trees down. Unless, of course, somebody wants to put a solar array in. And <laughs> All right. So I would not be in favor. Any anyone else who's not in favor? Yeah. Okay. Two. I don't think I'm in favor of it. Haven't Three. read about the bugs. Uh, I can almost quote primary uh, uh, contrary to common belief. They do not reproduce indoors. Yeah, so there you go. <laughs> My only concern would be if is uh, if they start using pesticides to try and get rid of the bugs. I'd rather. Yeah, and that's what Take I, the tree down and have pesticides sprayed all over the... So when we talked about uh, in the email chain, I gave them that, I told them the basic, the standard condition uh, the commission has, and he chose uh, not to utilize, he didn't want to use um, the um, exempt pesticides, the, the low risk, um, according to... the chain here. Yeah. If you took down this tree, what are the chances they're just going to go to the next tree? Yeah, they'll try and they'll obviously they'll try and find yeah. a seed bearing. I mean, box, tree. box elders drop a lot of seeds. Well, this is a it's not a box elder tree. It's a it's an ash tree, and they'll. Um, but taking down the tree doesn't tree, necessarily everyone. get rid of the bugs if they. It's like a yeah, 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 it would, yeah, because put that picture back up, Don. Everybody has seen this bug in their yard at some point in, in the, the yard. yard. I see it in our, our yeah, house, someplace. Right, house not reproducing in the house. No, <laughs> <laughs> no you have a, nice, do, a yeah. nice shot of just the so of the box. It's open. a little hard. So, so basically, you've Maybe got they, they they're gonna <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna reproduce on the tree throughout the season. So the numbers are gonna go up. Right. Yeah. So yeah. then they're they're going against his house, going back and forth to the tree, because that so is. Can I cut all the trees down around the house? house? They're, they're not a wood. They're, they're not a wooden base. No, I'm just trying to answer your question. Go down to the bug. Shovel <laughs> bug. <from laughs> my okay. So the three nays. Wait. No. Down. Is there a, I am going down. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Up to the top. <laughs> uh, go. Keep going. A little more. That's I'm at the top. Up. I'm at the top. I didn't. Uh, know. This is this. There's no, different descriptions. The this part. is this is from uh, from uh, uh, well, Penn State University. Yes, this is We've from the National Pesticide are. Information I've Center. I've seen that's the ones the that are more square. Right what are the, the ones question. that are? Well, well, that's the some picture. that just have a red gym. tail underneath. Don't have the red on top, but you'll see the red around the like a crescent on the tail. Are there the more of these place. trees? Don't they line the entire property? Yeah, but not none. That's the one everybody sees around here in New York. Right, right. Oh, but uh, do you have? Uh, I'm just saying. He's saying. He's I got gonna, attacked by one last summer. <laughs> <laughs> one. It was like a drone, yeah. right? To take me down. He, he's just saying that he's getting thousands of them. So uh, my, my question is, if there are more of these trees in the neighbor's yard, are we going to get a letter from them asking to chop down trees? Because all of his bugs go to the neighbor's tree. This, that was the only one. That was the only seed-bearing ash tree. I saw on that on that stretch on that whole stretch. Yeah, and that's 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 why they're that's why they're reproducing on that tree. It's kind of beside us, you know. So it's, All right, I, I might change my mind, Jeff. If that's the one tree, I could be okay with that, I suppose. All right. So let them know it's okay, Don, but he has to put the three um, as they as he proposed the replacement. Yeah. Vote. Native shrubs. And water the shrubs in the spring and summer the first year. Thank you. All right, the Zoning Advisory Committee Expedited Permitting Review. So this is, uh, Ted, this was something that so, was proposed in Zach. Yeah, I can only give you a little introduction because the truth is I don't fully understand everything that's going on, which is why I desperately wanted to share with you guys. But, <laughs> and, and then you can tell me what's going on and what we think about it. So Zach is especially looking at the, um, 
Liberty Mutual property? And how do we find a new tenant for that? Um, and so one way you can do that is if you pass certain conditions, the state will approve it for expedited permitting, and you, you they tend to target one property. And you can go on some website and see Ashland has four expedited permitting properties. The hope is that a business will say, oh, there's a fast track to getting going there. Mm -hmm. My concern, and this is what I don't know enough about, is would that process scare us as a conservation commission saying we want to be sure that we can do due process? Um, the promise is that businesses that want to move in will have an answer within a certain number of days and if the planning board or uh, um, zba or if we don't give an answer in those days the answer automatically becomes yes no, we can't do that. so but but i don't know how much we can control that pace so this flow chart flummoxed me frankly um, and i thought that those who had more experience on this board could help me think through whether this is something we as a uh, commission say Sure, that doesn't scare us. We, we still have plenty of control. Or that's frightening to us, and we're not really in favor of doing that. And I will take whatever the board thinks back to Zach. Yeah, so just, a, an, just an initial thought is, um, you know, under the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, the town can't, if something isn't approved within a certain amount of time, just say it's a default yes, you know, the project's approved. Um, and even under the bylaw for that matter. Um, but I think, you know, taking a look at this, this is only the, the notice of intent, um, which is what this timeline is, which this timeline is speaking to, is only one of the different filings that come before us, but as far as the notice of intent goes, I, mean, I don't see any issues with the most with most of this. Uh, I think it's dri driven by the regulations, and um, you know it's a process. So um, some of these notice of intent applications can go fairly quickly if it's a single family home or a septic system replacement that type of thing you know that can happen fairly quickly if it's a longer or a larger more complex project like a subdivision or um, a facility major facility modification up at Eversource and it could take longer but you know my sense is I think that um, you know this timeline looks reasonable to me um, and I'll let Matt and Don weigh in on it, weigh in on it since they're the experts. Um, you can see how it says Berkshire uh, I didn't make Regional it. Planning. I'm and, sorry, say it again. Uh, you can see in the, yeah. the, it's Berkshire Regional Planning Commission. Mm -hmm. So it's basically, you know, western part of the state, that would be you know, DP. We deal with DP zero, you know. And basically, me and Matt have never seen this language anywhere in the in the regulations. So this might be something that um, DP Western. Which language is that, Don? Just the um, right here. With you know, within 21 days of of the NY filing, and they say within 21 days of the, which is DP issues a file notification number. So they're basically saying uh, the commission holds a public hearing within 21 days of DP issuing a file number. We never do that. You know how long DP. Oh, the file number issue. You, you've seen like uh, yeah, we, you, you've yeah. seen the old agendas. Sometimes DP doesn't issue file numbers for months. That would be no. Basically, the regs say you get a filing within 21 days. You have to hold the hearing within 21 days, and if we go over 21 days, we ask them for permission because we, you know, either it's a date issue, blah blah blah. Yeah, and that's what that's clearly spelled out in the current regs. The, right. This other language that's included in here. In my opinion, is probably some sort of Western region policy that no one else in the state even right. knows of. So basically, we just meaning this flowchart is not helpful to us, or that's well, doesn't apply. No, I, I think that would probably just not apply. I, I think probably part of the case, it, the reason why that might be in here, especially for Berkshire County, is I'm guessing those towns out there may not have any conservation commission. In which case, this the board of selectmen is basically acting as Doing the council. So they may be saying. Okay, we got to wait for this DEP file number because we're really 
heavily relying on DEP, DEP to do that first review because we don't mm. do it, you know, and they're getting, you know, three filings a year. Right. Um, That's a good point. Yeah. So, but I think from your perspective, I think you can probably just strike that. But right. the rest of it all looks pretty accurate. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know, so, basically, so we're just yeah. talking about the filing notification um, language. Within 21 days Within of the 21 FFN days, issue. Yeah, right. this is, yeah, this is just, don't worry about that. It just goes 21 days, we have, we have a public hearing, and then we just go, we just go, you know, do the hearing, and then within 21 days of the closing of the hearing, you know, you follow everything else. Everything else is... Yeah, so your timeline is actually faster than if than you were that. to leave that in there, because you're saying, you know, if you're not even opening the hearing from 21 days till that number is issued, that's way longer than what you guys normally do. You're not trying to quantify for Zach how many days it takes to... I'm trying to... What I, what I'd like to do is go back to Zach and say the Conservation Commission is comfortable with expedited permitting. No, no, no. We cannot do no, that's what I'm asking. Because this is what I'm asking. And the Act does not allow us to. No, yeah. I mean, just the the Commission just has to follow the uh, the regulations yeah. laid out. The, the the time the time frame laid out in the in the state yeah. law, the state regulations, the town's bylaw. And the, and the bylaw regulations. And our charge, our commission. Right. Yeah. None of that allows for. But there, there are, but the commission is under time constraints to process the application. But it's not like, okay, within 100 days you have to issue a permit. Yeah, I mean, this is the public consistent hearing with, phase with, every, right. with every town in Massachusetts. Right. Not, so by expedited, right. they want them faster than this? Are they outlining here how they want them, or that this is what it is now and they want it faster? It's generally a process related to, to planning and licensing and, uh, you know, licensing and perfect, select that kind of stuff, business licenses. So Ted, were they asking if we can do it faster than this? Is that the question? Or I think my question was, and, and maybe it doesn't apply to us, it seemed to me that the whole point of expedited processing was that all local entities are required to make sure they have an answer to the developer within, I thought the number was 90 days, of whatever is the gun that starts the race, uh, if that's the notice of intent. And my question to the commission was, are we comfortable with that? No. We cannot guarantee or promise that. So the answer is no. If my understanding is correct, we are not comfortable with that. If they're saying the commission has to issue a permit within 90 days. Or any. Of, right. No, there is no. Yeah. It's once, once the commission has enough information to make a, a determination, then they do. Or the applicant themselves. If they deny the commission the ability to have more time to review the matter, and if the commission has asked for information that they haven't provided, the commission has the right to deny it based on lack of information, then they can go and appeal to wherever they want. Now, some, in some instances, there may be a pretty uh, brief yeah. period of time. Yeah, it could right. happen well, within we can 90 have days. Going up and but we can't guarantee. Oh yeah, opening yeah. hearing, closing hearing. Most of yeah, most of you guys, the smaller jobs, yeah. I mean, yeah, you do it in one meeting. For six you months, know, right? So some things maybe. So uh, I, I I'm on MassGov, and it says obligations of opting into Chapter 43D uh, within what it's 120, not 90, within 120 days of adopting Chapter 43D, which is this expedited permitting. A community must among other bullet points, amend local rules, regulations, bylaws, etc., to comply with the 180-day permit timeline, um, determine and make available the requirements for each permit, establish a procedure for identifying necessary permits for a project. Um, after the 120-day phase-in period is complete, the town must render permitting decisions on priority development sites within 180 days. But it sounds like, Jim, uh, one of these says amend the local rules, regulations, bylaws yeah. to comply with. So whatever other things we have, we'd say those don't apply if the state grants 43D and then we say we want to apply it to a property. 
So it sounds like you guys would have to then amend your bylaw and your regs to can yeah from a timing standpoint to put a time limit on it. But don't you need town meeting approval to change the bylaws? Yes. Yeah. And then, I mean, none of this would kick in. And, and a lot of times, you, the, the complicating <laughs> issue is when you're hearing when when you're looking at an application. Yeah, it's 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 one hearing, but you're actually having two hearings. You're reviewing it under the act, state law, and the town bylaw. And as you know, sometimes you guys vote to approve under the state law and deny under the bylaw. But still, it's the it's the timing phase. So, what are you going to do? You're going to okay. You, you're going to oh, we're at 180 days. We got to close under the bylaw, and then we got to continue under the under the state law. Well, this would that require would be, the change to the state law. No, well, they just said the town would have to adopt their bylaws. There's no way you can change the, the mass state rights. But if the act allows it to go beyond, or or needs it to go beyond 120 days, it, 180. It's giving me different things. The, the I'm the not sure which days count for which. Well, but you can you can imagine there'd be a scenario where, what is it, 120 days? We have an applicant in NOI. Uh, they're going back for more information. Uh, we're we requesting more information. 120 days comes. They don't have all their information to, in for us to make a decision. Then that's it, right? What can extensions? Can you imagine an applicant that would go along with that? What extensions may be granted? The 180-day review period may be extended under the following circumstances. If an additional and originally unforeseen permit or pre-development review is required, you may extend for 30 days. If federal, state, or municipal government agency is required, I'm trying to summarize, uh, or if enforcement proceedings that could result in revocation of existing permit and denial of application have been commenced, or if the governing body and the applicant mutually request the 180-day review period be waived or extended. So what's the town's benefit to this? I mean, do we get like so the a, benefit, a cracker jack the benefit, or something? And, and the idea was brought to us, to Zach, by the um, Chamber of Commerce, is <laughs> if a business says there is a fast track to getting approved, they are more likely to want to come to town. Tell them to ask for a tip, go to town meeting, they'll get your tip. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, and the benefit to the town then would be this undeveloped land that may be businesses are afraid to come deal it's, with because Hopkinton committees are too sticky, this one has greased the skids. The answer is no. <laughs> I don't like this. We're not too sticky. I'm not saying we're There's too sticky. There's other places far <laughs> stickier than we are. I mean, it's just I not, it's like not that straightforward of a process under the wet, under the wetlands, the bylaw and the it's Mass it's Wetland Protection Act to, to be able to do that. Um, and I, let me think about it, okay. Ted, and I'll try to write something up for, I'll, I'll you know, run it by Don and Matt and try to write okay. something up and get it to you so that you, you know, I'm learning something. as much as I can, as soon as I can, but there's so much I'm still confused about, about how we do and what we do that I would love. But, it, you know, and I think you're experience. right, you'd say, yeah, you know, there's already inherently expedited review times in the state law and the time by, and the town by law anyways, you know. The only delay is when an applicant asks for the continuation, or he doesn't give the or he doesn't, doesn't give, give the information. information. Yeah, I think that's the issue. Is we see so many applications that are just missing big chunks of information. That had they been complete and thorough applications to begin with, right, they would move much faster. Mm -hmm. But when it's like, oh, well, you've got to do a wildlife habitat evaluation. Didn't you read that in the regs? And mm -hmm. you right. didn't fill this out right. Go back and do it again. Right. You know, right. and and if, if they just did their job right the first time, yeah. Things would move along quicker, and that's, you know, I, I don't, in my opinion, sort of having this isn't necessarily going to motivate applicants to all so of a sudden. So, if it comes do up the next better. Zach meeting, I think my answer is we still have some concerns, but we're looking into it and we're trying to figure out some other answers. Does that sound okay for now? <laughs> I wouldn't say we're okay with it. I would just no, say no. I, we have concerns, and we're looking into some yeah. questions. We're yeah. bound by state statute and our bylaw to go through a process um, and um, that process can't necessarily have a time frame right we can't have a, a I sunset think, date of 120 days, or 80 days. I, I think since the state has to approve it the state can say the state laws now 
you can avoid because we've approved this. As yeah, far as the local laws, uh, our own bylaws, if we say we are on board, then our local bylaws now allow. So I believe. I mean, even the governor, I don't think, can say, forget the Wellness Protection Act, give these guys a permit. I've, I've certainly never heard of any other town in Massachusetts that's, I've never even heard a whiff well, of that of saying, oh, there's some, this is a special Wetlands Protection Act procedure. I've n never heard of it ever. But here's the main thing you gotta remember. Local and state government have no business involving themselves in real estate transactions, facilitating real estate transactions. So I like your response, Ted. Okay. We have it, concerns that we're looking response. into it. <laughs> we're looking <laughs> into more information. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So is, is something happening with the new tool that we don't know about? It's the, the no, right now yeah. nothing's happening. It's empty. Um, it's in, empty? In, yeah, yeah, they moved. Oh. Uh, which is why the guys that want to do the, the pipe can't get Liberty Mutual to lower the water level because there's no one there. But they're mm. still paying property um, tax on the assessed value of the property. So there's hope to do stuff. Some people are talking about schools, some sort of educational facility. Skid school. Um, yeah, I know. Skid school is a good thing. Just different things. But because it's in kind of a difficult spot, the thought was, and again, it's not my thought. I'm just passing yeah, along yeah, the conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The thought was because it's not on a main drag, it is not a high target area for businesses. But if you offer other, like here's a fast track, that it might then make it more. That's what a commercial broker's responsibility is, is to lease, sell commercial real estate. How is that our problem? Okay, let's move, <laughs> let's move on, stay on agenda. Um, so Ajo, the draft conservation restriction, Don, you circulated that. Um, I haven't had a chance to um, uh, read through it, and then we got the application um, today. So okay. I haven't had a chance to um, look through that either. But um, I think I sent you guys a model. Um, yep, you did. You know, so um, if you guys want to just sort of compare, you know, the model to what they're doing, and if you have any suggestions. So it's kind of that timing thing. Um, basically, he. Um, the way the order is, is, is we would give him feedback. If you're okay with every, everything he's written, then once he submits it to um, um, EOEA, then he can start. He can start the project. You know, and then there's that. There's a, there's a whole. Um, I don't know if I sent you guys out. There's a whole flow chart um, that they sent to the applicant. So it's just the first step. And then while it's going through the process, he's he's building, and then basically. You guys won't issue the certificate of compliance until the state has come back with an answer going, yeah, we're going to issue a, a CR, or if they if they don't, then we're stuck with, all right, we'll fall back with like what we did on um, Hayden, um, uh, um, the um, Hayden Row, uh, where they're taking the culvert out, mm -hmm. um, Gaber, um, where we did a uh, conservation easement, mm -hmm. if the state denies it. You know, if the state approves it, beautiful. So oh, not on Hayden Row, on a, the Ash. Ash, yeah, yeah, Ash, Ash and Chestnut. Yeah. Ash and Chestnut. Yeah, okay. So. I guess my only comment on this would be as far as, and I don't know if you guys feel any need to expedite it or not, but when I met with them, I brought this up to them, and they were like oblivious to, oh, what? Oh, we have to do what? I was like, did you read your order? It's like, I think it's number 63, and they were just, I don't know what that is. I was like, well, we'll probably call your attorney. They called the attorney while I was standing there. He's like, hey, what now? <laughs> this, was a, it this was a developer that you were talking to? Yeah. Yeah, this was, was Aho. This was yeah. Aho that yeah. you're talking yeah. to. Yeah, he just seemed a little cool. That's kind of well, weird, it was huh? Two, well, it was like two years ago when we went through it, and he was just like, and he had he had the other lawyer, and everyone was like, yeah, yeah, you know, whatever, whatever I got to do to make this happen, you know? So we're like, okay, yeah, you said you'd set this land aside. This is how you got to set it aside. You know? No. So. Didn't he, I thought he had to do a conservation restriction. That's what it is. is, the, no, is not, the no, not for, the, for another development that he did in town, didn't he? Or well, am I thinking of someone else? Right, it must be someone else. This is okay. his first CI. Yeah, okay. So this is, so this this is, is his, his first CI. Okay. Yep. It's in the business. It seemed like he would have. Right, that he would know what a CI yeah. was. Right. Okay. All right. So I'll take a look at that too, Don. And, uh, yep. and then um, the next one School was. School department. 
he had a um, he had a project change request to put in um, snow fencing instead of the chain link fence, and basically that came back. I had to send this to him because basically. Oh, um, this was Goddard was. Uh, yeah, like yeah. Uh, basically, um, you had um, you had um, Goddard had his first tree plan, and then the applicants arborist looked at it, provided comments, and said, "Oh, instead of a snow fence, you should have um, um, established tree protections along the entire property line using rigid fencing, not the mesh fencing proposed in the Goddard consulting plan." So then Gaudi came back and said, all right, the applicant now proposes a rigid chain link fence along the property line. Um, and now his, the, the um, arborist he's retained is saying, he's, he's saying the orange snow fence would be more visible. You know, sometimes chain link fences is, is, can get lost and it's still gonna, you know. It's not gonna uh, stop an excavator. It's still not gonna, it's not gonna stop an excavator and he, he's saying the orange fence would be more effective. He thinks the arborist is saying this. Correct. So why does what is going to carry out the tree protection plan for the applicant? My thought on this, I was thinking about it. I mean, if he's really concerned about not being able to see the chain link fence, just put the orange, orange fence, fence on, on top the of link. the chain link fence. That's exactly if what I'm thinking. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, the, yeah, orange, the orange fence, fence is pretty inexpensive, it. right? <laughs> right. I don't. I don't think he's doing it to cheap out on. So I, I had two thoughts on this. One, I couldn't see anything that actually spec'd the chain link. It just said chain link fence. Right. So I think in theory he could put up like a two foot tall chain link fence if he wanted to. Mm -hmm. The other thing is that rock yeah. site is so rocky. I don't know how he's ever going to drive any post to actually get it in. Stanchions. Get it in. Temperance. In any. Well, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it way? just be one of those construction yeah, ones where, where, where it's just you know it's got the metal. You know right. the, the nine degree. I don't know. I, mean, I don't know how you'd get it, that in there. Really, it's so it it's would, so undulating. Exactly. I mean, yeah. It's, ooh, right. Undulating. But you know what I mean. It's like the the temporary yeah. fence. Yeah. You yeah. know, yeah. you wouldn't be driving it in yeah. like you're yeah, installing a fence. Yeah. It's construction fencing where it's just lying flat on the ground. Uh, but yeah, I know what you mean. It because I've been out there and it's just like right. right. And if it ends up falling over, then it's right defeating the purpose. Yeah. It's so going to be a challenge. Well. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Jim. Um, what I said was the fencing is going to be a challenge. You're not going to be able to run one length of fence because right. of it being like this, you're going to have to do it almost section by section by section. And they're, they're proposing to have the two by fours around the trees, right? right yeah, that was in the plan. I mean, my sense is that you really have to be worried about the root damage, right? That. Yeah. Um, and if they have the two by fours around the trees on the perimeter, that'll provide some level of protection against getting dinged by the excavator. I mean, but I guess that's what I mean. The commission wasn't driving that bus, you know, chain link fence, you know. Yeah. Uh, now it's just him placating to the other consultant. Um, yeah. The other thing too is. You know the abutter, the abutter's arborist was the one who suggested the fencing, right? The chain link, yeah. correct. And then they responded to that. Yeah. But I guess that's what. I'm so saying. I don't so want to create an issue with the abutter where they say, "Oh, you know, you're not adhering to what you agreed that you were going to do," you know, and the project isn't even started yet. Right. Um, that type of thing. So I think to Melissa's point, let's just. Uh, let them figure out how they're going to put the fence, fence in, in and then put the orange fencing on top of it on top of it yeah if the neighbors if the abutters agree though because I mean, the abutters may not want the orange fence and they've already been through court on this right the orange fence is just plastic fencing no i know what it is but it's orange this is temporary yeah. I, I know it's temporary but it's still orange well the point was to protect, protect. the trees no, I get that too. Well, I'm just saying that the, the abutter, <laughs> all right, well, the butter and and this and the subject property owner worked out some you know, understanding between each other. And as you said, it was that it was the abutter's arborist who suggested the chain link. It's the applicant's arborist who suggests the orange. 
But in the letter, they specifically said not orange, <laughs> right? Who did the butter? No, didn't what? it just say not not orange fence? It, or it said not. No, the one they you were. Just yeah, I mean, basically, yeah, uh, oh, not, not mesh, mesh fencing. fencing. They wanted something. They wanted rigid fencing, not mesh fencing. They wanted something hard. Um, I mean, what what if the the developer came back with a letter from that neighbor saying I'm okay with X Y Z. Well, that would work for me. Because that's what I I had, I had asked him. I said, have you talked to this neighbor recently to just let him know if nothing else you're going <coughs> to be starting up the project? He's like, well, we'll know when we start cutting down trees. <laughs> <laughs> and we start delivering the yeah, they need to keep the lines of communication. Yeah, that was open what I kind of encouraged. So they need to communicate with the abutter beforehand chain link and then ask them if it's okay to put the orange fencing along with, along with the chain link. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, actually, yeah, the, I mean, the, they, all they said was rigid fencing. And then the applicant's consultant said, all right, we're proposing chain link, rigid chain link fence. You know, so, okay. All right. All right. Um, School department project change request. This was for the replication area. Correct. Just got that today. Uh, Matt hasn't had a chance to look at it yet. I haven't had a chance to look at it yet. Uh, but basically, the commission did talk about it um, back in the day for uh, the school project, the turf field, 1637. Um, it was discussed and it, it got put into the order of conditions in regard to the finding of fact. The commission was anticipating this would be part of the um, application, but the school um, needed uh, to change funding sources. So they said they would come back. So basically, um, the future, what future wetland replication area installation. Uh, will cause no significant harm to the areas and interest protected under the act and the bylaw. So in essence, you guys were talking about it through through the process. And then they said, oh, we'll probably have to come back and, and file um, uh, either a project change request, start off with a project change request and see if the commission would want it, you know, if, if they thought that would be amenable or if, if it had to be like an amended NOI if you wanted an amended order. So um, me and Matt had actually gone out and done, um, we did um, uh, walks with them, I'm trying to find what I did, there it is, project change, weather application. So um, let me just get their plan, there's their plan set. So I know Matt hasn't even had eyeballs on this yet, but Matt, here's that, here's that berm, mm -hmm. here's, the, um, here's the school board, mm -hmm. here's that area we checked out. So. Yeah. And that's the area we talked right, about. that's the area that that we talked about. So me and Matt have walked this area, and uh, it's basically um, just a bunch of a fill that was associated with look like um, with the the site development. So they would basically take the the fill out, and there's that stream channel we were talking about to to provide um, a hydraulic um, connection um, through the area. So. Since the commission knew this was was coming, um, I would think we could we could do it as a, as a uh, as a project change because you guys already dis discussed it, and we could if if you wanted to issue it as a uh, insignificant project change, we would write a letter, but we would incorporate all the standard wetland replication conditions change for for the project. So it's not like this is coming out of left field. You guys wanted it. As part of the NOI, they just weren't able to incorporate. They needed money just to gen to generate these plans, and they didn't have the the funding source at that time. Yeah. So um, I think insignificant project change is fine, rather than an, an amended order. Does that sound okay to everyone? Yeah. And yeah, just make sure we stipulate, you know. I'll put all the, all the yeah conditions. all this all the conditions yeah. that would be for a wetland replication will be yep. in the letter. Yeah. You know. So. Okay, great. Thank you, Don. Okay, and then let's see um, draft minutes for review. March twelfth looked good to me. 
Um, did everyone have a chance to look at them? Yep. I get a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. And a second, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And opposed? So, I, I, I'm sorry on that statement. I wasn't here, so I can't tell you whether they're compacted or not. Yep, so we'll do 601. Yep. Um, so that project change about the, the fencing? Yes. Was that okay? It, 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 no, right? You guys, you guys still want the rigid fence, right? So it's, it's been the rigid fence, yeah. yeah. And they can. Ah, uh, we're talking about. Right, right. Yeah. I just want to get that straight. So, so, <laughs> yeah. And then if they want, they can supplement with with colors to make it easier for them to see. If yep. the butter stays on. Correct. If the butter is okay with it. But the butter didn't have a problem with the colors. He just had problems with the mesh, the, the soft, the soft softness. He wanted hard. Yep. You know, so, so we want we want the chain link, and then that. if he's okay with the because the current uh, guy is complaining about oh the chain link is, is, isn't isn't good visual. You know, I I I want the orange mesh because I'll be able to see the limit, and I'll tell my guys, don't drive your machine past that. So to me, you guys are saying no, you got to put the, the the fence. But we hear you about it getting lost. So if you want, you can put the orange fence on the rigid fence. That's your if response. The, if the abutter is well, okay I with it. Well, we want to encourage them to, to meet with the abutter. <laughs> I think he could put up the, I mean, it's his property. I think he could put up orange fence on his property right. no matter what. Exactly. Yeah, I think his concern but, was more how it's going to be installed as much as not being able to see it. I think the seeing it was sort of a secondary thing. I think it's going to be... Let's the applicant. The applicant needs to go back to his consultant, who put this plan together. Yeah, that's not our. It's yeah, not he our said he, place he, to determine he, how he's yeah. going to install it. Yeah, he I mean, said he was going to yeah. do it. He proposed right. it. You no. can figure it out. Um, he said we now propose a rigid fence, chain link fence. Right. Okay, and then I I think Don included in the packet is a um, community choice aggregation. Um, outline. I just wanted you guys to look at that. We don't have to really talk about it tonight. This is information. Can I, just, can I ask what does that have to do with with our charge? What does that have to do with Wetlands Protection Act or the bylaw? So, under the Wetlands Protection Act, this is my logic. It is an initiative to um, require more renewable power. Oh yeah, um, I know coming what it into is, but renewable right. energy coming into a community. Yeah, no, I get that. So it's more of a climate change, you know, renewable. What does that have to do with us now? Um, well, it goes back to the EEA. We protect the MVP natural resources of the town by the town becoming a municipal power company. No, by the town requiring that more renewable energy be part of the energy portfolio that comes into the town. So again, just it's okay. something to think about. Yeah. You can look at it. And well, I can tell you what I think of it now. Here. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> one, one. Four words. One plus three. I like it. Rubbish details to follow. Okay, and then the last thing, Don, did you bring the uh, Sally the Salamander costume for Janine? Because her birthday is coming up. Huh? Is this like a thing? It's a uh, tradition of the commission that. <laughs> Uh, on Did Earth Day, after I wore it last year, because <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you washed it, like Sandy when you well, washed. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I just shook it out. <laughs> so the new, the newest commission member, yes. every Earth Day has to dress up in the salamander hey. suit and um, hold the sign for Earth Day and hold the sign downtown. No, so, stop. Yeah, yeah. So. so yeah, you mean you year. have the Did pleasure you? of doing uh, it this year? I got that prize. How come there's no more roadside cleanup on Earth Day? I remember years ago we used to do that. Yeah, the garbage was out cleaned up. No, no, no. <laughs> but we used to, like, I had Fruit Street, the section of Fruit Street. Every group, the um, Green Committee. People don't litter anymore. Come on. Yeah. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. Um, oh, it must be because there's no plastic bags allowed. That's what it is. Can I, can I add a thing? Can I? Well, I like that. The cleaning up was good. Clean up. You can organize that. Yeah, no, I don't have time. Um, so this is totally so I do the public education for stormwater like I'm the, the we have a central Massachusetts regional stormwater coalition for which we're hopping as member and statewide 
and we've been working on a fifth grade curriculum to meet the next generation science standards with some WPI students. Um, and one of the topics is watersheds and what is a watershed? Do you live in a watershed? And we actually have a watershed model that we can use and borrow. So the students that are working on this are probably going to finish their semester because they finish in like April before the end of the school. And I would still like to go back. So Hopkins School was interested and um, I was wondering if anybody on the commission would be interested in helping support like going into the school, like a school program if they wanted volunteers. I will. Yeah, I'd do that. Okay. I thought would Just to talk <laughs> about stormwater and Watershed. conservation Watershed, issues. Yeah, Watersheds, conservation issues. Yeah, because they like to have like community speakers. We have a model that we can use. We have a curriculum that you can use as a basis. But yeah. they always like yeah. it. You know, it's kind of a break and it ties into its teachers. And we're trying to encourage them to do more and more of this community outreach and STEM and uh, all this. Yeah, I'd stuff. be willing to do it too. I mean, we kind of do it by default, anyways. Mm -hmm. Occasionally, you know, like a Boy Scout troop or a class will call and say hey can you have someone call come in and talk to us about the commission you know and either Don will do that or I'll do it or someone will end up doing it but yeah because I went in nice. to the Hopkins school um, last semester didn't I volunteer for that too is that it yeah 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 <laughs> that was it so that it yeah, the green, awesome, right? yeah it was, was fun so the, the green club but then and I also did a teacher training too oh, um, oh yeah 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 that yeah. was what I volunteered you for right mm -hmm. I thought you did them both <laughs> But that was fun too, you know. So one was the teachers, and the other one was the Green Club. So what would this be? Would it be working with the students or just the teachers? Um, it would be a little bit of both, really. Um, just trying to see how we can better support each other. Yeah, because the Hopkins School is the is the elementary school, right? That was Fourth, the Green Club. The we teachers I did, I think, were the high school teachers. Yeah. So we're training with the high school the teachers. The science teachers. Right. The science teachers. Like, yeah. There's like, yeah, two components. There's one of trying to encourage more um, career development in science and technology and education. And I get sick of just hearing about robotics clubs, so I like them to see okay. us more. <laughs> no kidding. I'm with you 100%. <laughs> um, and then the second piece is, you know, the outreach about just water pollution and conservation and watersheds, which also helps us comply with their permit. So. It's um, dual force, but I always volunteer because my kids are there anyway. But it'd be nice to have more people and yeah. different perspectives. And so, if you're trying to reach out, like those it. are the point that I could, you know, I can look through my emails because you know, the contact people would be that that teacher that organized the, the teacher training, and then the, the 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 teacher that does the green club at, at Hawkins. Those would be the two contacts I think you'd want to reach out to. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. We're working now with. Jen Jordan, she's like the, see that's one of the challenges of figuring out who is the person at the school or who is right. the person at the town. They don't know, like they don't mm. know who to talk to. Right. Um, is it specifically fifth grade you said or does it matter what grade? We're is working it? specifically on curriculum for fifth, fifth grade, grade because the way the next generation science standards, it kind of lends itself well to that grade and what mm -hmm. they have to do. But it could be anybody. And like we have this, the, so the regional coalition has a watershed model that we can borrow anytime we want to do any kind of outreach, like the salamander, you know, with the costume. And <laughs> for a few more months. <laughs> yep. But it, it's available for anybody. Like, so it's like Cub Scouts, Girl Scouts, you know, schools. If anybody's doing anything, it's available to borrow. Yeah, I'm, I'm willing to help, Carrie. So let me know what I can do. Awesome. So, if I can continue on Jim's Earth Day roadside cleanup, I have a quote. Let everyone sweep in front of their own door and the whole world will be clean. Nice. Man, I agree. Clean. I sweep in front of my door. Yeah. Apparently, everybody, see, nobody owns the doors along Fruit Street or <laughs> you just Lumber gotta, Street. Or you got to uh, you gotta tell, you gotta tell the kids that throw the 12-pack of beer cans out that car window on the way home. No, that's Friday not what's night, happening. Back. Have you noticed if you, I mean, you see this more when you're on a bicycle. And you realize that the bulk of the cans that you see are blue. And that's because the half-life of a blue can is orders of magnitude longer than the half-life of any other color can. Hmm. Interesting. Really? I've determined this by the <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, it's very scientific. Blue cans are the thing that people buy. I think the meeting's no, all that could possibly be the case. What's, what's blue? Uh, <laughs> okay. Ready to close the meeting? Yeah. Yeah. I think so, guys. I sent everyone an email with a link to the um, 43D thing I was reading, so feel free to look or ignore it. It's up here. But I sent that link so you can check it out. Excellent. Thank you. So, you want a, you want a motion to close? The, you have a motion to close the meeting? Motion. 
Second. Second. Oh, 